The challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Duke McClure's Silver Dollar Cafe was one of the gaudiest boomtown establishments in Dawson. And its star attraction was a pretty young singer named Claire Malvern. As a rule, the hard-bitten miners and gold rushers who patronized the cafe treated her with respect and deference. But there were times when some of the patrons became a little too vociferous in their admiration. One night, after she had finished a song, a bearded prospector became particularly enthusiastic. By thunder, that little girl's the prettiest thing I've seen since I left Butte, Montana. You never saw anything as pretty as her back in Butte. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring her over here to our table. Hi there, honey. Why, hello, stranger. Are you having a good time? Oh, I sure am. And I'll have a lot better time with you sitting at my table. Come on over. No, thanks. Oh, come on over and join us. I'm sorry, mister, but you'll have to excuse me. No, no, don't be stubborn, honey. I may not look like it with these whiskers, but I'm a real good company. The answer is no. Now, looky here. Are you coming peaceful like, or am I going to have to... said no. What's that? Better let go of her arm, Sardo, and go back and sit down. Why, you chief tin horn, who do you think you're talking to? I'm talking to you, mister. Well, yeah? Well, here's my answer. You asked for it. Oh! Well, you knocked him out. That's what I intended to do. We'd better help him. Come on. Let his partner take care of him. Don't suppose I could induce you to join me at my table? I guess I can't very well refuse after the way you came to my rescue. (laughs) Thanks. I didn't know they came as pretty as you this far north. Does that mean you're new to the Yukon? Just hit town this morning. What's your name? Jackson. Solitaire Jackson. Why solitaire? Because you're fond of playing... Oh, I see. I suppose you got the nickname from that diamond solitaire you're wearing on your finger. That's what they tell me. You know, you don't look like a gold rusher. (laughs) Is that another question? I'm sorry. I shouldn't be so inquisitive. As a matter of fact, I came up here on business. I have to square an account. Meanwhile, Duke McClure, the owner of the cafe, was seated at a table in the back room. With him were two cold-eyed, hard-jawed men. There was an empty chair at the table and a general atmosphere of impatience and irritation. Finally, one of the men said... How much longer are we going to have to wait for Pinky to show up, Duke? Yeah, he should have been here long ago. Well, we won't wait no longer. I'll tell you boys what the deal is and pass the word to Pinky later. Yeah, what you got in mind, Duke? Well, when I was over at the express office this morning, I found out something mighty interesting. Like what? The express company is getting a half a dozen shipments of gold from the cricks this afternoon. They're all bound for Skagway and outside. But uh, they won't be sent on from here until tomorrow, which means they'll be sitting in the express office safe overnight. You're thinking maybe we can grab that gold? I don't think it. I know it, if we handle the job right. What's your plan, Duke? We'll show up at the express office tonight just before closing time. We'll make the clerk open the safe, then we'll tie him up and gag him. When we leave, we'll lock the door from the outside, so it'll be morning before anyone finds out what happened. Hi, Sammy. Yeah, good enough. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's Pinky. Sorry, right, boys. Where you been? I told you we were going to have a meeting here at 1 o'clock. Sorry, Duke, I got held up. Will you hear what I got to tell you? What do you got to tell me? You know who's sitting out front in the cafe? How should I know? People, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, but one guy in particular. Who? Solitaire Jackson. Hey, what's Solitaire? that? Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. He's sitting out there big as life. That big, flashy diamond ring on his finger. Yeah. And what's more, your singer, Claire Malvin, is sitting at his table talking to him. You suppose he's looking for trouble, boss? I don't know. 
You guys stay here and tell Piggy my plan for robbing the express office. In the meantime, I'll go out front and try to find out what Jackson is up to. <laughs> Solitaire Jackson's face remained completely impassive and expressionless as he looked up and saw Duke McClure approaching his table. Well, 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 if it ain't my old pal, Solitaire Jackson. Hello, Duke. <laughs> you two know each other? Sure. Didn't you hear what he called me? We're old pals. Hey, you mind if I pull up a chair? You own the place, don't you? <laughs> yes, thanks. Hey, uh, I suppose you just got out, huh? Two months ago. Hey, let me see how long was it they sent you up for? Five years, wasn't it? You've got a good memory. Yeah. You know, Claire, you might not think so to look at him, but Solitaire here used to be one of the meanest, toughest hombres west of the Rockies. Really? Fastest man with a six-gun I ever saw. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, Solitaire, you still haven't told me what you're doing up here in the Yukon. Has, uh, has he taken you into his confidence, Claire? Mr. Jackson came here on business. Business? That's right. As I told Miss Malvern, I came up here to settle an account. Payment is slightly overdue. Five years overdue, to be exact. That's so? I uh, see you're still sporting that diamond solitaire on your finger. Have you ever seen me without it? No, that's a fact. It's a uh, sort of a trademark of yours, ain't it? Well, how about it, sweetheart? How would you like to have a sparkler like that? I wouldn't. And please don't call me sweetheart. <laughs> kind of up on your high horse tonight, ain't you? Well, I'll leave you two to continue your chat. Order anything you want, solitaire. It's on the house. Thanks. I'd rather pay. Well, suit yourself. Oh, uh, just one thing before I go, Claire. Don't sit here chatting with Mr. Jackson too long. You're getting paid to entertain all the customers. <laughs> As Duke McClure returned to the back room, there was an evil glint in his eye, and his lips were twisted into an unpleasant grin. What you find out, Duke? Uh, Jackson's here to make trouble, all right. You mean he's gunning for you? Sure he is. <laughs> but I've got a little plan that'll take care of Jackson and help us get away with that express office robbery to boot. Let's hear your plan, Duke. Not now. I'll tell you later. The first thing I'm going to do is to get down to the Mounty headquarters and have a talk with Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston was seated at his desk, and the great dog Yukon King lay stretched out beside his master's chair as Duke McClure entered the office. Well, afternoon, Sergeant. Oh, hello, McClure. What's on your mind? Oh, I just dropped in to give you a little friendly tip. Oh? You uh, ever hear of a gent called Solitaire Jackson? No, I can't say that I have. Well, he's a bad man from back in the States, a real ornery customer. Earned himself quite a reputation as a gunslinger. But uh, he finally got sent up for armed robbery. Go on. He uh, just got out of prison, and now he showed up here in Dawson. If you ask me, you'd be smart to keep an eye on him. Oh, well, thanks for the tip. But may I ask why you're going to all this trouble to warn me about him? Well, what do you suppose? As a businessman and a public-spirited citizen, I naturally want to see all lawbreakers kept under control. Mm-hmm. Now, what's the real reason? What's the real reason? <laughs> By thunder, you're a suspicious curse, Preston. Policemen have a habit of being that way. All right. I'll lay my cards on the table. When Jackson got sent up, it was me that helped put him behind bars. I testified at his trial. Now that he's here in Dawson, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he might try to get even with me. That makes it a lot clearer. But mind you, I still think you got reason to be on the lookout. From your own point of view, I mean. I see. Well, just to be on the safe side, I'll check on him. You know where he's staying? No. But, uh... If you want to look him up right away, you'll find him over at my place, the Silver Dollar Cafe. All right. I'll get my parka and go with him. A short time later, the sergeant and Duke McClure arrived at the cafe. You dead. Uh, you better go alone, sergeant. I'll go around the back way so he won't know it was me that brought you here. Huh? What's he look like? Oh, he's a good-looking, dark-haired gent sitting at a table in the corner. 
You can uh, tell him by the ring he's wearing. A big diamond solitaire. All right, I'll go in and talk to him. Thanks for the information. Yeah. Come along, King. <laughs> Solitaire Jackson was sitting alone at his table as the sergeant approached. Your name, Jackson? How? Oh, uh, that's right. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. I'd like a few words with you, if you don't mind. Gladly. Sit down. What I have to say is personal. You want to talk here, or would you rather come down to headquarters? This'll do well enough. After all, it must have been Duke McClure who put you on to me. All right. What would you like to talk about, Sergeant? What's your business in this territory, Jackson? I like to travel. Did you come up here to get even with Duke McClure? Why should I want to do that? McClure says he helped send you to prison. <laughs> That's a polite way of putting it. How would you put it? I'd say he framed me. You mean you were innocent of the crime? Yeah, that's what I mean. Not that I expect you to believe me. There's no particular reason why I should believe McClure in preference to you. He's not exactly a savory character himself. Not exactly a savory character. <laughs> That's good. He's as rotten and crooked as they come. According to McClure, you were a professional bad man even before you were sent up for robbery. Sure, naturally he'd say that. If you want to deny it, I'm willing to listen. All right, Preston, you seem like a square shooter. I'll come clean with you. It's true I used to be pretty wild, and I've always been handy with a gun. But I finally wound up in jail. And that made me do some serious thinking for the first time in my life. Meaning you decided to go straight? That's right. And I did go straight. I worked as a mine guard and a railway detective. That's how I ran into Duke McClure. What do you mean? McClure was head of a gang of hold-up men. I got on his trail and started making things hot for him. So to get me out of the way, he framed me for bank robbery. I was innocent, but I got sent up for five years. I see. So now you've followed him to the Yukon to pay him back. I didn't say so. Well, is it true or isn't it? And if I say yes, you'll run me in. <laughs> Sorry, Preston, but I'm not making any threats. All right, Solitaire. I guess that's the way we'll have to leave it. But if you're smart, don't go gunning for McClure. Remember, you're on Canadian soil now, and the Northwest Mounted Police will not tolerate six-gun justice. If you shoot McClure, I promise you, you'll hang for murder. Thanks for the advice. Where are you staying in town? The Victoria Hotel. Very well. Report to the Mounted Police any time you leave town or change your address. Sure, I'll be glad to. So long, Sergeant. Bye. Come on, King. <laughs> Before returning to headquarters, Sergeant Preston stopped off the express office to speak to the manager, Jasper Greeley. Oh, hello there, Sergeant. Hello, Jasper. Have you received those shipments of gold yet from the creeks? Yes, they've all come in. The inspector has assigned Constable Owen to help guard the office overnight. He'll be here an hour or so before closing time. Good, good. I reckon the gold will be safe enough for the two of us watching over it. I'll drop around myself sometime later in the evening and see if everything's all right. That's fine, Sergeant. I'm much obliged. All right, King boy. Let's go back to headquarters. Bye, Jasper. Uh, so long, Sergeant. Meanwhile, Duke McClure was standing behind the bar at the Silver Dollar Cafe, keeping an eye on Solitaire Jackson. Not long after the sergeant had left the cafe, Solitaire paid his bill and got up to leave. Duke hastily went into the back room, where his three henchmen were playing cards. Hey, Skeeter. Yeah, yeah, what do you want, Duke? Solitaire Jackson just leaving the cafe. Follow him. Find out where he's staying. All right, boss. When Skeeter returned to the cafe about half an hour later, he found Duke seated at the table in the back room. He had just finished writing something on a piece of paper. Beside him were the other two crooks, Pinky and Squint. Oh, it's you, Skeeter. Yeah, boss. I followed Solitaire like you told me to. Where's he staying? At the Victoria Hotel. Good work, Skeeter. Well, boys, how do you like my fancy penmanship, eh? <laughs> does it look like a dame might have written this message? It sure does, boss. <laughs> Read it to Skeeter. Yeah, yeah, let me see. Uh, dear Mr. Jackson, you're in terrible danger. Duke McClure is planning to do something to you. Please meet me right away in front of the fur company warehouse down by the steamboat landing, and I shall tell you what I know. Sign Claire Malvern. Yeah. <laughs> Say, Duke, you sure are a slick one. <laughs> All right, you need to take this out and give it to one of the waiters. Tell him to deliver it to the desk clerk at the Victoria Hotel. Sure thing, Duke. Pinky, 
You go on down to the warehouse and wait there for Jackson. You know what to do when he shows up. Right, boss. A short time later, Solitaire Jackson was in his hotel room when he heard a knock at the door. Yes, what is it? Message for you, Mr. Jackson. Where'd it come from? Waited from the Silver Dollar Cafe, left it at the desk. You better wait a minute till I see what it says. Yeah. Oh. Any reply? No, no reply. Well, I hear you. Thank you, sir. Solitaire Jackson left the hotel and headed down to the waterfront. Darkness had fallen, the early darkness of a Yukon winter. When he arrived in front of the fur company warehouse, Claire Malvern was nowhere in sight. But suddenly he heard a slight movement behind him and felt the muzzle of a gun what? jammed in his back. Keep your hands right where they are, Jackson. Oh, so that's it. That message was just a trick to get me here. You figure things out fast, Jackson. But not quite fast enough. All right, start walking straight ahead. And don't try any false moves or I'll drill you. With Pinky giving the commands, the two men arrived a short time later at a cabin on the edge of town. All right, inside, Jackson. The door's open. Well, good evening, Solitaire. <laughs> nice of you to pay some visit. It was nice of you to send a man for me, Duke. I might not have gotten here all by myself. Yeah, that's what I figured. All right, Squint, take his gun. He carries it in his shoulder holster. All right, boss. I got it. Well, then, Solitaire... Take off that diamond ring you're wearing and hand it over him. Anything to oblige. Uh, thanks. I'll just try it on if you don't mind. Uh, what do you know about that? A perfect fit. Man, that's a real sparkler, ain't it? You know why I'm borrowing your ring, Solitaire? I can make a pretty good guess. <laughs> I'll bet you can. Well, I'll tell you anyway. Tonight, four men with bandanas over their faces are going to rob the express office. The leader will be wearing a big flashy diamond ring, and the other three guys will call him Solitaire. <laughs> Need I say more? Duke, I take off my hat to you. When it comes to framing people, you're a real genius. Uh, and believe me, I speak from experience. At six o'clock that night, Jasper Greeley, the express office manager, and Constable Owen were alone at the express office. The last customer had just left. Well, Constable, it's time to shut up shop. Yeah, it's uh, six o'clock exactly. I'll lock the door. All right. As Jasper Greeley walked to the front of the office to lock up, the door was suddenly pushed open. Get your hands up, mister. You too, Constable. Oh. Hey, you put the money. I had to. He went for his gun. All right, come on in, you guys, and shut the door. Sure thing, Solitaire. Now then, mister, keep your hands up high and walk over to the safe. Hey, now, wait a minute. You can't. Go on, get moving. All right, open up the safe. I thunder you won't get away with Shut this. Shut up or you'll get just what the constable got. Now hurry up and do like I say. With nervous fingers, Jasper Greeley worked the combination of the dial. Finally, the heavy door of the safe swung open. <laughs> just take a look inside that safe, boy. She's really loaded, huh? The biggest haul we ever made. Ain't solitary? Yeah, I reckon it will be. All right. One of you tie this gent up and gag him. The other two unload the gold out of the safe. All right, boy. Come on, you. All right, hold still. Several hours later, Sergeant Preston dropped around to the express office to see if everything was all right. He knocked on the door, but no one answered. Well, that's strange. Let's see if the door is locked. Yes, King, you seem to think something's wrong, and so do I. We'd better force our way in. Putting his shoulder to the door, Sergeant Preston heaved hard against it. Again he heaved, and this time the door splintered open. The lamp had been left burning inside, and the sergeant's eyes took in the scene at a single glance. First he rushed over to the still figure of the constable and examined his wound. Then he untied the manager. Thanks, Sergeant. I was praying you'd show up soon. What happened? Four men come around just as I was locking up, and they shot the constable and got away with the gold. They locked the door on the outside. Did you recognize them? No, they was wearing bandanas over their faces, but the leader had a big flashy diamond ring on his finger, and the others called him Solitaire. Solitaire, eh? That's right, Sergeant. How about the constable? Is he dead? No, just wounded. I'll take him to headquarters so the police surgeon can attend to him. And King and I'll see if we can't run down the men who robbed you. When Sergeant Preston returned to headquarters, he was surprised to find Claire Malvern waiting for him. 
After turning the wounded constable over to the care of the police surgeon, he returned to his office to speak to her. Claire seemed nervous and frightened. Sergeant, I, I don't know whether I should have come here or not. Something wrong? I'm not sure. You see, this afternoon at the cafe, I saw you questioning a man called Solitaire Jackson. Well? I suppose you know that there's bad blood between him and Duke McClure. Yes, I do. Well, Sergeant, a, a little while ago at the cafe, I went into Duke's office. Duke was sitting at his desk, and he had a big diamond solitaire on his finger. What's that? I'm sure it's the same ring that Solitaire Jackson was wearing. Duke was holding it up to the light and chuckling. When I came into the office, he seemed quite startled. Right away, he dropped his hand below the desk so I wouldn't see the ring. Go on. There's really nothing more to tell. It's just that, well, I started thinking that, that maybe Duke had done away with Solitaire. Glad you told me this. May help me solve a crime. What do you mean? Has something happened to Solitaire? I don't know about that, Claire, but the express office was robbed this evening and the constable on duty was shot. The leader of the hold-up men was wearing a Solitaire diamond ring. You mean that, that maybe Duke... I don't mean anything yet. Before I start drawing conclusions, I'm going to the hotel and check on Solitaire Jackson. Would you, would you mind if I came with you? Of course not, if you're worried. Come along, King. When they arrived at the hotel, the desk clerk told Sergeant Preston about the message which had been delivered by a waiter from the cafe and how Solitaire Jackson had left the hotel immediately afterward. The sergeant borrowed a pass key and went up to Jackson's room on the off chance that he might have left the message behind. Sure enough, he found a folded paper lying on the table. This might be it. Yes, it is. What does it say, Sergeant? Dear Mr. Jackson, you are in terrible danger. What? Duke McClure is planning to do something to you. Please meet me right away in front of the fur company warehouse down by the steamboat landing, and I shall tell you what I know. And it's signed, Claire Malvin. What? Sergeant, I never sent him that message. It was probably sent by Duke to lure Jackson into a trap. What are you going to do? I'm going to put King on Jackson's scent. In the meantime, you'd better go back to the cafe and try to act as though nothing had happened. At that same moment, the crook called Pinky was reporting to Duke McClure in the back room of the cafe. Well, what'd you find out, Pinky? I followed Claire like you told me to. Yeah? And sure enough, she went straight to Monty headquarters. Yeah, she did, huh? Then I was right. She did spot that diamond on my finger once she came busting in, huh? You think she figured out we did something to Jackson? Yeah, that's exactly what I think. If she ever tells her story on a witness stand, they'll be able to pin the express robbery on us. Holy smoke, we gotta get her out of the way, Duke. Wait till she gets back to the cafe. Then I'll call her into the office and you can grab her. Then what? We'll slip out the back way and take her to the cabin where we're holding Jackson. When Sergeant Preston left the hotel, King followed Jackson's scent down to the waterfront, where he had been taken prisoner by Pinky. From there, the trail led to a small windowless cabin on the outskirts of town. Yes, King, I agree. There's danger ahead. The solitaires being held prisoner in that cabin is almost certain to be at least one man guarding him. We'll have to move carefully. Come on, boy. Inside the cabin, Solitaire Jackson was gagged and tied to a chair, while Skeeter and Squint were seated at the table playing cards. The crooks were taken completely by surprise as Sergeant Preston kicked open the door. Marty, I'll get him. Don't shoot, Marty. I'm got reaching. Got the gun right out of my hand. You're lucky I didn't shoot to kill. As it is, you're under arrest in the name of the Crown. Sergeant Preston took the crook's guns and then forced Squint to untie Solitaire Jackson. When he was free, the latter grinned a bit sheepishly at the man who had saved him. Thanks, Sergeant. I, I'm beginning to think you Marty's are good men to have around. Well, that depends on which side of the law you're on, Solitaire. How in blazes did you find me? My dog trailed you here from your hotel. I suppose it was that express office robbery that made you go looking for me. That and the fact that Claire Malvin suspected something had happened to you. What, what do you mean? She saw your ring in Duke's possession and became worried, so she came to headquarters and told me about it. She was worried about me? She was afraid Duke might have killed you. I see. Uh, look, Sergeant, about that robbery, it was Duke who pulled the job, wearing my ring. I thought as much. There's the gold right over there, stacked up against the wall. With your testimony, we shouldn't have any trouble convicting McClure of the robbery. Curse again, Preston, and don't go for your gun. I guess you're covered. Duke! Why, well, Thunder, you sure showed up at the right time. I heard Preston and Solitaire talking before I opened the door. So I figured I'd better make a surprise entrance. All right, Piggy, bring the dame inside. Come on, get moving, sister. All right. Claire. Oh, thank heavens you're alive. No, ain't that sweet. <laughs> if 
she hadn't started fretting about you, Jackson, she never would have gotten into this mess. What are we going to do with them, Duke? Looks like there's only one thing we can do. Get rid of all three of them. Sorry, Duke, but I'm afraid you're not going to get rid of anybody. What makes you think so, Preston? Because you've forgotten... King! What? No! The big dog's sudden leap caught Duke by surprise, knocking him to the floor. Pinky turned in dismay at the sudden development, and before he could recover, Preston sprang at him. I'll take that gun. The other two crooks jumped forward to help out their friends, but Solitaire waded into them. No, no, you don't. Meanwhile, Preston had seized Pinky's gun arm in a grip of steel, and with his right fist was driving blow after blow to the crook's head. Finally, the crook went glassy-eyed and limp. As Pinky sagged to the floor, Preston bent forward to take the gun from his hand. But at that instant, Squint leaped on his back. Thank you, Preston. His arm was crooked tight around the Mountie's neck, but Preston reached back over his shoulder and with a sudden movement, hurled the crook clear over his head and slammed him down hard on the floor. But Squint could absorb punishment. Rolling over quickly, he sprang up at Preston with a murderous look in his eye. The Mountie was ready for him. I'll kill you, Preston. I'm right ahead. The sergeant's fist caught him square in the jaw and sent him sprawling to the floor, unconscious. Meanwhile, King had disarmed Duke and was pinning him down as Solitaire finished off the remaining crook. There you go. There. Oh, I'd like to at me again. Well, Preston, pull off his dog. First, I'll take your gun if you don't mind. All right, King. Easy, boy. He's had enough. On your feet, Duke. You too, Skeeter. It looks like you've got things pretty well under control, Sergeant. With your help, Solitaire. It was a pleasure. I only wish I could have been paired off with Duke instead of Skeeter. Don't worry about that. Your testimony will help to put Duke right where he put you, behind bars. And he'll stay there. Before you go, Duke, suppose you hand over that diamond solitaire you took from me. Uh, all right, take it. And I hope it brings you rotten luck for the rest of your life. It's going to bring me the best luck I ever had. That is, if... If... Uh... If what, solitaire? Now look, Claire, I know you told Duke this afternoon that you don't like this kind of a ring. I suppose you think it's too flashy. What I meant was that I wouldn't like to have Duke give me such a ring. That kind or any other kind. What if I were the one who gave it to you? I'd like that just fine. <laughs> well, King, now that that's settled, this case is closed. <laughs> We now take you to Northwest Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson. You sent for me, Inspector? Uh, yes, Sergeant. When you came back from patrol, I gave you the job of finding the Yukon King. But I'm uh, taking you off that assignment temporarily. Something new has come up, sir? Yes. The old miner's been shot and robbed on Venture Creek. Two young fellows named Lee Durham and Hank Bristow are accused of the murder. They're headed for the border. I want you to bring them in. I'll start right away, sir. Let's go, King. It sounds like a comparatively simple job of trailing two fugitives. But a desperate outlaw named the Yukon Kid is at large. Can it be that he's mixed up in this murder case? If so, the sergeant may be heading into unexpected danger. Be sure to listen to this next exciting adventure, Stolen Gold. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you once each week until September, when we shall resume our regular Monday, Wednesday, and Friday broadcast. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until our next broadcast. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>